Turn that place on. Here, let me switch this. So, some uh, passages of scripture I enjoy reading in the King James Version a little bit more. Uh, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And, and this is the part that I want us to, to see and understand. And forget not all of his benefits. Now, in the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and what's going to happen? All, all these things other things will be, added. will be added unto you. So, so here the psalmist says that there are some benefits that you and I attain because of our relationship with the Lord. That's right. Now, now the way to get it, he said, bless the Lord, O my soul. So, so when we bless the Lord and, and we give him the praise and the honor that's to his name, it allows us to not forget all his benefits. Now, how many of you, how many of you have jobs? How many of you work? Amen. Man, all kind of stuff wrong about <laughs> How many of you have jobs? How many of you get benefits on your job? So they pay your salary. Yeah, yeah. They, they pay your wage. Come on. And then after you get paid that wage, there's something else that goes along with it called benefits. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, the interesting thing is that if you have benefits, if you have health care, mm -hmm. if you get sick, your benefit is that they will somehow pay partially or, or, or all of whatever for your doctor's visit. Yeah. But then you go to the doctor and there's no guarantee that that benefit will heal you. Yeah. 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 There, there's a limited guarantee that the benefit will pay for it. Yeah. Limited, because they, they're kicking back stuff now. And, and with, with the new health care legislation, hospitals are going crazy. Yeah. But this is why I love being saved. Well, this is why I love being on the Lord's side. Yes, yes. This is why I love knowing that my calling and my election is sure in Jesus Christ because the benefit package that we get right, yeah. as a result of being saved, hold on for a minute. First of all, when I signed up, and they said sign me up for the Christian Jubilee, yeah. when I signed up, I was assured yeah. that as soon as soon as I accepted and confessed Jesus as the Lord of my life, I began an eternal, ongoing, everlasting relationship with God that could never be broken. Now that's, that's, that's the payday. Amen. But then the psalmist says, and I love it because the joke that I told is really relevant right now. Because when you, that was a joke too, uh, when God saves you, He doesn't take us away right away. Now, now the best, the, 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 the best, most perfect situation would be God will save us, and then we go spend eternity with Him in heaven right there. But He doesn't do that. He leaves us here on the earth. Now, as long as He leaves us here on the earth, guess what's going to happen? We're going to have testimonies like Young Mark here. That, uh, that same need that I had operated on. I don't know if it's the weather or what, but it's hurt. We have sickness, we have disease, we have things that confront us, but our benefit is this. Verse 3. Who forgiveth, first of all, all that iniquity. Yes, yes, yes. Now, now, hold on. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how bad it was. It doesn't matter who you did it to. Doesn't matter how many times you did it. Who forgiven? What? Oh. All. That iniquity. The Bible says that God takes our sins and throws them in the sea of forgetfulness and then puts up a sign that says, No fishing allowed. Wow. Hallelujah. So no matter how many times you drag it up, if I ask God for forgiveness, I am. Forgiven. He said he separated.
separated our sins. How far? As far as the east is from the west. Yeah, you messed up, but guess what? When you came to Jesus, the Bible says, I came to Jesus just as I was. Wounded, weary, and sad. But I found in him a resting place. And he had made me glad. He took your sins and, and the minute you received him, he separated them as far as the east is from the west. Those sins can never come back in touch with you. When Jesus died, he paid the price for your sin. That's just the first benefit. Look at the next one. Who healed it? All. All. Not some of them. Listen, if you walk around with sickness in your body, I, you know what? You, you need to go back to your benefit plan. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. See, to most insurance companies, uh, they, they give you an insurance policy and they have all this fine print in it. We never read the fine print. That's where we mess up. This is one insurance policy, not insurance policy, assurance policy, Amen. that you need to read the fine print. Amen. Because the Bible says, I'm blessed coming out, yes. and I'm blessed coming in. Yes. The Bible says he made me the head and not the tail. Yes. The Bible says that he has put his hand upon me, and every step that I take, he has blessed me. Who healeth all? If you've got a disease, if you've got a dis-ease. Yeah, come on. That's what it is. It's a dis-ease. If you have a dis-ease, there is a healing scripture in here for that dis-ease. Yes, it is. All right, now, I'm going to tell you a lot of the stuff that I prayed for today. I, I, I'm going to jump, I'm I'm jump on some ground here. Go with me. I'm not gonna, I, I don't want you to get messed up. But if you read in Deuteronomy chapter 28, and, 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 and Reverend Ellis and I were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, that it talks about the blessings that God has for your life, and it talks about the curses that God places on your life. And God does place curses. Amen. I, I, everything is not from the devil. Some things are curses because we disobey. Okay, hold on. Take a trip. Deuteronomy 28. Yeah, the same man. I guess I preached on this before. You got it all marked up in the Bible. Yes. Amen. If you woke up that day, so you said, I might as well just I might as well mark this stuff up in my Bible. And it shall come to pass, you see it? If thou shalt. Hearken what? Diligently. Diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God and observe to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Now, if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God and do all his commandments, what's he going to do? He's going to set you on high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon thee and do what? Overtake you. Now, I love it. He didn't say all these blessings will come upon you. He said all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. Look at what he said. Verse 3. Well, no, let, let me finish that. Now all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee, there's that word, if you what? If you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. No, it doesn't matter where you go, you're going to be blessed. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of the ground, and the fruit of the cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flock, and thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket, and thy store. Blessed shalt be, thou shalt be when thou goest out, and blessed thou shalt be when thou comest in. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before their, thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before these seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouse and all that thou settest thine hand to do. He shall bless thee 
in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk with him. Wow! If you walk with God, look at all the things he's going to do for you. Skip down to verse 15. Now the blessings go down to verse 14. You see that? Look at the beginning at verse 15. And fast forward all the way to verse 68. See verse 68? Now the blessing plan, the blessing benefit plan is 14 verses that covers everything. But now we get into some ground that we need to talk about at some point in time. It won't be today. Verse 15, but if thou, it shall come to pass. And look what it said, it shall come to pass. Not it might. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God and observe to do all that he commands, which I command thee this day, that what's going to happen? All these curses shall come upon thee. And the curses start in verse 15 and go all the way to verse 68. Now, here's what I'm going to say. As the people of God, we are not cursed people. We are blessed people. When you receive Jesus Christ, the Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse. Because the Bible says cursed is every man that, that hangeth on a tree. So Jesus bore our infirmities and our weaknesses, and the curse he took and nailed to the cross. But now watch this. But we disobey God. We leave the area of blessing. And we voluntarily walk around in the area of curses. So the things that, are, that go along with the curses, when we start playing in that field, they attach themselves to us. And if you go through this, you, you watch and see. A lot of the stuff that you see there, cancer and all kinds of things, those are curses. All right? Those are not things that the people of God should have to endure. Amen? Amen. So here's what I'm going to tell you. Now, uh, Sister Howard and I went to the Mackinac Policy Conference this week, and I was driving home from Mackinac Friday. And coming through, uh, uh, what county is that? Uh, Oakland County. It was raining so bad. I mean, it was, it was, the rain was terrible. It seemed like just as I got out of Oakland County, it stopped. And the sun was shining. But if you look back, you can see that it was still a bunch of storm and stuff going on there. Well, that's what it's like with God. You can stay in the sunshine on the blessing side. And as long as you're standing on the blessing side, the sun is shining on you and everything is good. But if you decide you want to go back and drive into the rain, guess what? Everything associated with rain is going to come your way. Thunder is going to be there. Lightning is going to be there. Hell is going to be there. What are you saying, Pastor Howard? When you disobey God, you take yourself out of the blessing realm and decide, I want to stay in this realm where the curses are. I don't know about you, but I'm, I want to be blessed. Amen. So I'm going to cash in that Psalm 103 benefit, and I'm going to say, who healeth all my diseases because I'm obedient to the word of God. Now, let, let me say this, and I'm going to pass, and then we're going to get ready to take communion. A lot of the stuff that's on us is because we're disobedient. Amen? And I don't necessarily mean I'm in rebellion against God. I, I'm purposely going out and being in rebellion. But you know what? The Bible prescribes for us. You read in the Old Testament what our diet should be like. Well, come on. Amen. And high blood pressure didn't come from the devil. Amen. It came from all that salt. Amen? That, that blood sugar that you have, it didn't come from the devil. See, uh, we blame the devil for a lot of stuff. But we couldn't do the pushaways. Amen? I, I, know, I, know how, I know how chocolate does some people. What is it, Cheryl? Them Fierro Roaches or, or whatever it is. And you're calling your name. 
Yeah, yeah Roche, whatever. <laughs> They, they be calling our name. So we eat ourselves into some of these conditions. Now, here's the good thing about it. God doesn't care how you got it. Because he is able to heal it whatever it is. Yes, he is. Because he can, first of all, he'll forgive you for your stupidity. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And the way, you know what? The way we eat sometimes is stupid. Yes. Okay? You go to McDonald's, you get hot fries. And you watch them, they just pour that salt on there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You get stuff that's cooked in grease. And if you read the report of the, some of the stuff that's coming up from China, you don't know what you eat now, then. Amen. I'm telling you, you better, you, you better, you know what? I wouldn't dare, I wouldn't dare sit down to eat food without saying grace. Lord, I, I'm not sure what this is. I know what they're saying it is. <laughs> I know what they say, but you know what? I'm not sure, so I want this to be covered by the blood of Jesus. That when I take it in my mouth, I'm making sure that your hand is at work. Amen. 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 Who forgiveth all thy disease, verse 4, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. God crowns you on that with loving kindness and tender mercy. Amen. Let, let, let me end on this note, and, and I'm going to bring it back to our young people. God loves you. And, and, and as your parents, as adults, if we're going to exhibit the love of God, we have to love you also. Yes, yes. And the Bible is specific on what our behavior is is supposed to be. And yes, you have to obey your parents, but obey them because you love God. Yes. Because God sure loves you. Amen. Jesus died for you. Jesus went to the cross and, and rose from the grave for you. Why? Because he loves us. He crowns us with loving kindness. Think about that. Next time you get into a situation, realize you might not see it physically, but there's a crown on your head. Yeah. Loving kindness. And, and, and that crown carries weight far beyond anything you interact with. Yeah. When somebody tells you, no, just remember, you're cr I got a crown on my head. Yeah. Loving kindness. Next time somebody tells you, I don't like you. Yeah. You're too fat. You're too skinny. You're too light. You're too dark. Your hair is too short. You don't have any hair. Next time they put you in their box, remember, he crowns us with loving kindness so that your youth is renewed like it is. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. Jesus loves you. God is not mad with you. God is not angry with us. If God be for you, Romans chapter 8, who can be against you? you? You know I love to say it like this, if God is for me, what difference does it make? <laughs> who is against me? I'm talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm talking about the one that wakes the sun up in the morning and makes sure that everything goes the way it should be. If God is for me, what difference does it make? Who is against me? God is good to us. Now, now, I, I, just so you know, you need to drop the screen for a minute because I want everybody to know I, I've got a good message for you. Amen. It, it's there. Oh, you already took it out. All right, but amen. And the message is, you, you know it's there. All right. It's called Five Reasons. Uh, that Christian parents lose their children. Wow. Wow. Five reasons Christian parents <coughs> lose their children. And, and, and we're going to talk about that hopefully uh, in the future because I, I guess I can't preach next week because it's youth day. I mean, because it's youth day. <laughs> I love the fact that it's youth day. I, you know what? When I don't get to preach, 
Amen. Yeah, I'll preach about yeah, I'll preach the Father's Day. Let me give you these five reasons real quick. You don't have to write them down because they'll be on the PowerPoint when you see it. Falling in the into the temptation of using religion to control our children through guilt and shame. If you don't do this, God's going to get you. Number two, parents seem to be afraid of the world instead of empowered to live in. We're so afraid of everything. And our children see that. Children don't see their parents drawing any joy from their faith. So they say, why should I sign up for this? It's not making you happy. Children are discouraged from finding answers to their questions. And children believe they have nothing to offer the Christian community. That's going to be a good message. And it's going to be even better because I, I'm meditating on it for a couple more weeks and let it marinate. Amen. Throw it on the grill and cook it up. Amen. If there's anyone here that's not in a relationship with Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life, I extend the invitation for you to come. Would you stand? If you've never received Jesus, and you come forward, I'll lead you in a prayer right here, right now, where Jesus can become the Lord and Savior of your life. <laughs> Not easy anymore, is it? If you're here and you've never received Jesus, I'm going to ask if you would come forward. I'll pray a prayer with you right here, right now, where Jesus will become the Lord and Savior of your life. Is there one here?